Hi, this is Athena Starseed, and I'm on my um, rainbow diet fast experiment. And uh, I just wanted to say that I'm at the Sound Palace Temple. It's super beautiful here. There we go. Nice little view of where I am. Now I'm sitting right here. I've been kind of studying. Um, Don Tolman's, oh, this is an incredible book, okay, for everybody. This is called The Farmer's Desk Reference, and this is by Don Tolman. And it has got some of the most incredible, riveting, fantastic information in it. Everybody go look up Don Tolman. I'll put a link at the bottom. You gotta check his stuff out. He's like, he's like a walking encyclopedia himself, but basically what he did is he traveled around the world for 17 years looking for a special recipe that he read about in the Bible that made Daniel strong and wise, and Daniel could interpret the king's dreams. And um, so all of the research from looking for this one recipe led to this encyclopedia, because after 17 years, he basically couldn't find the recipe, and he gave up, but he had all this stuff to write this great book, because he studied all these different indigenous cultures, and like the shamans, and different kinds of farmers, and different type of, um, agriculture and how every food was a medicine for the body. Uh, for example, walnuts look like the brain and they have a hard shell and they have two hemispheres and a corpus callosum, like a little thing that connects them. It looks just like the brain. Or So walnuts are good for the brain. And tomatoes, tomatoes are the size of the heart and they have lycopene, which is the color red in them. And they cut down on heart disease. So the tomatoes medicine was for the heart. So celery, selenium, the bones, it's good for the bones to make them strong and so on and so on. Kidney beans for kidneys, stuff like that. Avocado for the uterus. Anyway, so he basically crafted these two magnificent books and put them into this encyclopedia, okay? And uh, one of the things he talks about is going on a rainbow diet to cleanse your body out. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going on the rainbow diet and uh, after 17 years, he totally gives up on finding that recipe in the Old Testament that made David wiser than all the other people in the kingdom to advise the king and interpret his dreams and like 10 times stronger than all the other men. What was David eating? Why was he more intelligent? Why was he more spiritual? How did he have these supernatural powers? Well, he totally gives up on his quest and he sits in a cafe and there's this guy that's randomly walking around and he says, you know, can I sit here? And Don says, yes. And they start talking and the guy offers him a job. And he says to Don, hey, what are you doing? Would you like to work? My family and I buy all of these sacred texts and all these artifacts and I basically haven't gone through them and I need to go through them and itemize them all. Would you help me? And Don says, sure, I'd love to do that. And of course, He's looking through all the sacred texts. He finds one book, it's an Aramaic. He understands it, he's got a photographic memory. He reads and starts weeping. He had totally given up. And right when he gave up and surrendered to God, the recipe's right in front of him and he's getting paid to actually read it. So he reads it, he starts eating it, he starts fasting, he starts doing all these magical things. He teaches, he's all over the world, he's helped people cure all kinds of diseases just with plant-based whole foods. So Don Tolman is one of my major heroes um, and basically that's why I'm doing this this rainbow fast cleanse and one of the things you do when you're fasting is you're talking to your intuition and so my intuition was like write poetry write poetry so I was like okay how many people love writing poetry? I do. So I started writing poetry. Okay, so I'm gonna read you um, one of the poems I wrote on 9-30-2017, September 30th. Um, and this was inspired by meeting an angel. Okay, we'll talk about angels later, but I definitely have a lot of contact with angels. In fact, we have an angel here in the backyard, Bella Grace. This was a message from an angel. 
<clears throat> three boulders of wisdom. I sat with an angel. His wisdom took flight. He shared with me my roadblocks, and I knew he was right. He said we all face earthly boulders on our roads of this life. It's all part of growth. It teaches us sight. To die to our ego, not to our living and not to our love. These boulders will teach us to be empty, souls of silence, golden in God. To turn confusion to caring, from manure to sod. <laughs> then our boulders turn into pebbles and pebbles turn to sand and sand turns to wisdom and now joy is in our hands. Because we now understand. We breathe in the knowing and we exhale what's not. Untangled our yarn and reveal what we've got. Fear, anger, and judgment. My angel just poof, totally nailed me. <laughs> You're great in all these other areas except for fear, anger, and judgment. And you know what? He was right. Fear, anger, and judgment, the almighty three. These tangle our lifetimes and they heal all we see. Fear. Fear is our forgetfulness. A sacred trusted friend. To bathe in the knowing and the unknown without end to love all the moments, up, down, alone. We find ourselves hungry. It's all apropos. Anger. Anger is stronger and can move us to flight. It's passion unbridled. It's sadness bound tight. Anger is suppressed sadness. Anger is suppressed sadness. To understand anger, we must first remember to grow past our dissatisfaction and past all ego. Something is birthing and something is new. A purpose in struggle will assist our breakthrough. To the other side of compassion, to the situation and the self. To the heaven within, all endeavors are stealth. So we soar like the raven and the robins and then rain over opposites that enlighten when the wind heals our pain. For anger, anger is energy that can be profound if gratefully guided from pain, treasures are found. And judgment is the hardest to overcome of them all. Actually, judgment's three. Judgment's the hardest to overcome of them all, for it shows we are separate and different and small. To, to see through so much to a much, much larger view, one would have to be God. And to see humans is one too. And in seeing this perspective on unity grace, we could see all the love in each tiny face. Boop, boop. The children, the people, the planets, the plants, all doing the same sacred, mystical, cosmic dance. It's everything, it's nothing, it's all love and all light, it's all darkness and winter fall and starlight. As Buddhas and sinners and sages and saints, we all co-create with our beautiful paints. Let us sing in a choir of color and sound, knowing all is important and nothing's profound. The riddle is the question answered in time, the labyrinth of pathway to get lost and then find. We only forget to remember and then we remember to forget as we spin through infinity and we bless all regrets. I bless you, I bless you, I bless you, I bless you. Our crown mantra is thank you 
as gratitude becomes grace. And now anywhere we go is our now holy space. It's raining, it's sunny, it's light, now it's dark. It's all my own play through this life as my art. I am a painter, I am the painted, the paint, the poet, the player, the prophet, the saint. Om, Om, Om. So I have some footnotes here. <laughs> so the footnotes are fear. Okay, there's three mighty things that can ground you to the earth that you have to like untether so that your air balloon soul can float up to the heavenly octaves. And that's